they got on the other side, they laid down their burden. Thank you. We will get to listen to uh, Natalie and uh, Sylvia again in a little bit. Uh, next we have State Representative Timmy Chasson. Timmy is going to share a few words for us with um, Juneteenth and how it impacts us, okay? Even though I claim to know what's taking place in our past to our ancestors, I decided to go because the internet is amazing. New things are coming out every single day. So when I went and did a little research on it, I, I, I came across an article, and the article said that freedom finally came on June 19th when some 2,000 Union troops arrived in Galveston Bay, Texas. The Army announced that more than 250,000 enslaved black people in the state were free by executive decree. It then went on to state that Reconstruction marked an era of great hope, and formerly enslaved people immediately sought to unify families, establish schools, run for political office, and push radical legislation. When I read that, I said, they immediately ran for office. And she asked me to speak on the topic of how can this relate to helping us terminate. Let me be clear with everyone. If we don't believe for a second that our freedoms are currently being assaulted upon, then we're foolish. What's taking place in Baton Rouge and in Washington, D.C., across this great nation is they're hoping that you stay uninformed. It wasn't the fault of the enslaved slaves at the time because they didn't have social media and mass communication. We have to stay involved. So to answer the question that Ms. Malvo asked me to speak on, the way to help on the state level as it relates to Juneteenth is if we do not stay involved Reach out and grab a friend to tell a friend. It is the, the, the Marsha Broussards voter registrations. It is the Chris Williams uh, constantly letting us know about what's taking place in our community. Then we're doomed to repeat in a sort of way. There are things that are occurring, y'all, on a daily level. I watched it daily. People that are actually smiling at you. Shake your hand, they're good people. I tend to hope they're misinformed, but some of them are not. They are daily after our freedoms. So what we have to do is stay involved, stay motivated. These current elections are the most important things that we can participate in and make known to the masses to where we can make sure that we are honoring and celebrating and commemorating our ancestors. And that's the best way we can do it. So with that being said, that's my message. I love y'all. Happy Juneteenth. That was really uh, great, Timmy. Thank you so much. Uh, next on the agenda is Kendrick Morton, he's the president of the Greater Southwest Louisiana Business uh, Chamber. So he'll let us know from his perspective how do we as African Americans get into the business world, get in the business world. Okay, come on, Kendrick.
Good morning. Happy Juneteenth. Today we gather to commemorate Juneteenth, a day of profound historical significance. On June 19, 1865, enslaved African Americans in Galveston, Texas learned of their freedom, walking the true, of the, the true end of slavery in the United States. This day stands as a powerful reminder of the enduring struggle for freedom, justice, and equality. As we celebrate Juneteenth, we also recognize that freedom is not just the absence of chains, but the presence of opportunity. True emancipation means the ability to thrive economically, socially, and politically. Today, I want to focus on a crucial aspect of economic development in the black community, a cornerstone for achieving lasting equality and justice. Economic empowerment is the key to transforming, transforming our communities. It is about creating pathways to prosperity that are accessible to all. It's about ensuring that every person has a chance to succeed, regardless of their backgrounds or circumstances. The historical context of it. For centuries, systemic racism has deprived black Americans of economic opportunities. From the era of slavery to discriminatory practices of Jim Crow and the more subtle but equally damaging redlining and employment discrimination of the 20th century, the black community has faced significant economic disadvantages. These injustices have resulted in a persistent wealth gap that we must address hate on. This is our path forward. Education and workforce development. Education is the foundation of economic empowerment. We must invest in quality education for our children and ensure access to vocational training and higher education. By equipping our youth with the skills needed for the 21st century economy, we can pave the way for a more prosperous, prosperous future. Entrepreneurship and business support. Small businesses are the backbone of our community and our economy. We need to foster an environment where black entrepreneurs can thrive. This includes providing access to capital, mentor programs, and business development services. Initiatives like community development, financial institutions, and minority business development agencies play a critical role in this regard. Home ownership and financial literacy. Home ownership is a primary vehicle for building wealth. We must address the barriers that prevent black families from buying homes, such as discriminatory lending practices and lack of access to affordable housing. Additionally, Promoting financial literacy is essential so individuals can make informed decisions about saving, investing, and managing debt. Policy advocacy and systemic change. Economic development also requires systemic change. We need policies that promote fair wages, protect workers' rights, and ensure equitable access to economic opportunities. Advocating for policies that address the racial wealth gap, such as reparations and targeted economic investments is crucial. The community investment and development. Investing in our communities means building infrastructure, improving health care access, and ensuring public safety. Community development projects that focus on revitalizing neighborhoods can create jobs and foster a sense of pride and ownership among our residents. Celebrating the progress. As we celebrate Juneteenth, we also acknowledge that the progress that has been made, black-owned businesses are growing. More black students are graduating from college and there is a rising awareness of need for economic justice. However, our work is far from over. We must remain committed to the vision of a society where economic opportunities are not determined by race. This requires a collective effort of individuals, businesses, and policymakers. It requires us to support black-owned businesses, mentor the next generation of our leaders, and advocate for policies that promote economic equity. On this Juneteenth, let us honor the legacy of those who fought for freedom by continuing the fight for economic justice. Let us strive to create a future where every member of the black community can achieve economic success and live with dignity and pride. Together, we can make this vision a reality. Thank you, and happy to Councilman Kenneth Boudreaux, who is no stranger to anyone in this room. <laughs> Come on up, Kenneth. Good morning, and I'm going to kind of do a different angle. Uh, you've gotten a lot of the history from Dr. Sharon from Kendrick. I just want to acknowledge a few things, and I think before we go any further, Anyone who is not a committee member, I'm going to ask for your assistance. There have been individuals like Susanna, like Brother Friedman, Brother Milton, who have been working in this June 
18th celebration issue for a very, very long time. And to see what we have grown to, I would like for us to collectively appreciate them by giving them a round of applause and just showing them some love. Number two, um, you may have heard me speak against this cliche called um, building your own table. You don't have a seat at the table, build your own table. And I, I'm just, I apologize, but I'm just not a fan or an advocate of that because I, I do not believe I would see that the table has been taken. Sometimes you just have to take your seat. So I want to welcome you to City Hall because City Hall is for everybody in the city of Lafayette. And we have had now three events right here in this atrium representing our issues from our perspective. And to see the gathering here today is just a great feeling as a council member to see us come to the people's house, because this is the people's house, and we gotta show up and take our seats. So if City Hall is the table, now you see how you don't have to go build your own table, you already have your seat, just take your seat. So thank you for that, and congratulations to you. And the, the third and second to last thing that I, I want to acknowledge is that as a council member, I just want to encourage you. There have been a lot of work and effort put into many, many events which have already begun and will go throughout the weekend. Go and support it. Show up and participate. We do realize that everybody cannot be at every event. That's okay. But if you can, I am asking you, as a representative of this great city, to please go out and support the efforts and the hard work that has been put in, and that is the love and the appreciation you could show to the committee. And the final thing, Timmy talked about it, elections. Remember, elections have consequences, and when we make bad decisions, we suffer for a long time thereafter. So I just want to encourage you to pay attention. We have some federal elections that are upcoming, we are seeing the, 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 the brunt and the impact of recently state elections and local elections that have taken place. So continue to make sure, although we do a lot of focus on voter registration, don't forget voter participation. Yeah. We've got a lot of people on the books that stay at home. Staying home is not an option. Yeah. Nothing that they can say about nothing will change and people don't listen, doesn't make sense. Every now and then we're going to have a breakthrough. You don't know when that's going to come. So whatever you do, make sure that we get people to participate in these upcoming elections because, again, elections have consequences. Again, I want to thank the committee. I want to thank you, the public, for coming out and showing up at City Hall. Please don't make it your last time. Know that we got budget season is about to open up. We're going to be financing the, the events, the programs, the economic development, the infrastructure development that is needed to get things done. I think we're going to have a really, really good budget here for our community. I want to personally thank the Mayor President. She did the proclamation outdoors, of course. Normally when we have events here, whether it was for Paul Bro, whether it was for Black History, she has stood right here at these podiums with me, and I appreciate that because in that partnership between administration and legislative is when we get things done. As we said, we are better together. So again, thank you. Congratulations to the committee. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you, Hannah. Um, our next speaker is a wonderfully talented young lady, Alexandra Poetic So Johnson. You will uh, see Alex tonight at 5.30 at the Hyman Park Recreation Center. Uh, she's um, hosting Juneteenth Lyrical Expressions, Spoken Word, and Open Mic, and they'll have several people that will display their talents. So, come on up, Alex. She has two poems that she would like to let you know about. And I'm, I'm very proud of her. This is my niece. <laughs> Um, I will say that I'm not used to standing behind a podium. Is it okay if I try without the mic? Yeah, but I, I use my hands. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. 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 Good, great. I feel free. Um, because I am, and I thank you to those before me, my ancestors, for uh, allowing me to feel that, 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 that moment, that, that continuous elevation of freedom. Uh, 
Um, you guys want to hear some poetry? Yes. yes. I need some more energy. Yes. I need some more energy. Yes. Yes. The, first, the first poem I'll share with you is called Power of Black Women. Um, I wrote it for an Alton Sterling documentary. Uh, I was asked to write something from the perspective of black women because it's not something that's always talked about um, in general society when we're talking about black issues and how black women respond to the loss of black men um, from these atrocious actions like police violence. You know, how black woman absorbs her emotion because she's not able to truly express herself because she is black woman and black woman is angry and loud and vicious. Um, the day after Alton Sterling lost his right to breathe, black women prayed to bury aggression. So they couldn't use emotion to justify suicide, try to lynch her dreams, say her screams ring too loud, when slaughter like bloody pavement till her swallow anguish with opioids, Xanax, prescribe her addiction, say her torment sound too much like begging, like benefit, body bent backwards till her health smell too much like freedom, like dignity, rather lodge her head on her vehicle, say rocks against naked flesh her less than full whip, then shotgun, that 10 minute cavity search is not great, is justified, is only way to find source of black girl magic, tell media, make her body viral, broadcast her pain like everyone is strong enough to take this, to adapt, strong enough to survive, then mock her trauma with her womb, aches of bullets declaring war against water gun, against illness, against infant, Tell her no one care better for her children than system, than casket. Say her voice sound too strong, too loud, too vivid. Then the media ask her, too loud, too vivid. Then the media ask her where it comes from. Mm, dang. Sorry. Yeah, come on. Y'all ready for the next one? Yes. 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 
And uh, my organization is called Lyrically Inclined. Our goal is to expose our community to a higher level of self-expression using spoken word poetry. So we want to teach people how to cope with their emotions through poetry. You know, if you don't have any ideas, we have one poetry. And it allows you to express those, those natural feelings, those, those pains, those heartaches, those moments of happiness, and, and leave your ink on stage. Um, okay, this one is a bit more motivational. And I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna cue it up because I know this poem and the devil is not gonna stop me. I want to motivate people to, to address their emotions, address their adverse childhood experiences, address their, their ancestral traumas, and be real with you. How is this impacting you? What do you have to do to overcome those barriers? So I wrote this poem. I never thought that I could lose myself in my own I never thought that I could lose myself in my own potential. Craving moments of creativity that help me cope along my path. The path leading beyond mountains that stretch beyond our universe. Abundantly humble. Moments pressed against my fingertips, firmly imprinting my destiny beyond the stars. Success is a matter of speaking. Forming syllables that make you question why success does not lie behind an easily open door but behind hurdles that make you question why the heck you're even here. Reciting lonely lullabies that rock your passion to sleep. I promised myself that I would never do this again. Forget where I come from, to fall victim to emotions that hindered me as I stood in disbelief. Disbelief that this, that this, could be my life. But what do you do when your spirit loses its rhythm? Do you count backwards and hope that you find your place? Immerse yourself in the Earth's core and hope that the world waits? Yeah, you can do that. But ain't nobody gonna wait for you. The world ain't got time for you to play catch up. The only thing that matters in this life is when you step up. Grab hold of dreams and turn wishes to blessings. And let the words you speak be mindful of your existence. Articulate freedom that thoroughly defines your peace and shelter your ears from blaring horns, resounding defeat. Remember that life is what we make it, despite your circumstance. Just believe in you. Don't worry about what anybody else says. You gotta have a plan for your life. Not just envision greater things. If scattered thoughts restrict your growth, imagine what organization brings. Don't limit yourself to curse verses, you can do it. Fulfill your potential. A little self-doubt just means you gotta push through. And the more you dwell on what you lack, the less time you spend getting answers. Now look, I don't have any more metaphors to accept this piece. My intent is not to entertain you, it's to reach you. So I'm gonna just say this plain. You gotta have, you gotta believe in yourself like no one else can. I hope this motivates you. Thank you. And again, if you'd like to hear more of the poetic uh, experience, uh, come out to the Hyman Center, um, the Hyman Park Center, and Alex will be there with about six or seven other artists. Okay, that's 5.30, and it's free to the public. All right. Um, our next speaker is Mr. Ravis Martin, and he's with the president of the NAACP. Ravis is going to let us know. I'll let him know. Ancestors living free. No worries in the world until foreigners land in your city and who you thought was your family sold you off, never to be seen again. With chains and guns, things you've never seen before, 
tackle your family down, take them as hostages to become their slave. Treat them as dogs. Listen to your masters, they say. Grab you by your neck, put a chain around you. I, I, I can't breathe. Look around at the foreign land with sorrow in your eyes. See your family chained, standing in line as you are, watching as your family goes up and gets sold to different foreigners, mad, sad, and irritated at the same damn time. Tears running down your cheeks as it's your turn to go up, going once, going twice, sold to the white man in a nice white suit. Shh, we are not in the twilight zone anymore. America started to get better. On June 19, 1865, two years after the Emancipation Proclamation was issued, the troops came marching to Galveston, Texas with the promise of great hope uncertainty and the markings of our country's second Independence Day, Juneteenth. We give and we take away. We know that after the Civil War and the freeing of the slaves, within a decade our country saw the return of white supremacy and the rolling back of the rights that African Americans had gained during the Reconstruction era. And for roughly 50 years, African Americans had to endure a period of pronounced legalized discrimination violence, and other expressions of white supremacy. We ushered in the Civil Rights Movement, and with it, the end of the separate but equal doctrine, legally eradicating racial segregation. We passed the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, the Fair Housing Act, we ratified the 24th Amendment, and we witnessed the establishment of the Civil Rights Division within the U.S. Department of Justice, the U.S. Commission of Civil Rights, and the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. But during that same period, we witnessed the assassination of Megger Evers, the Freedom Riders, Bobby Kennedy, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We saw the rise of the black power movement and the black race consciousness in all its forms, but we also saw the assassination of Malcolm X and Fred Hammond. Affirmative action came, but so too did the racial dog whistle politics and racial regressive policies of President Nixon and Reagan. We elected our first black president, Barack Obama, but he experienced unprecedented assassination threats for a president. And he brought about the desire among many white Americans to take their country back. And in some respects, they did when Donald Trump became president, promising to make America great again. You see, over the arc of history, there's been this push of progress and then this pull of retreatment, this surge of hope and then this tug of fear. We are at a moment in our country's history where we must decide who we want to be. Beyond the history and the rhetoric, do we truly want to be a bulwark against the forces of white supremacy? Do we want to give our time, our talent, and our treasure to the cause of justice and equality? As a people, we are a transform transformative community of race men and women during the mid 20th century. Do we have the will to be that again? I know that we can be, but we must decide. And we must decide soon. Who do we want to be, Lafayette? It is time for us to pivot to the substantial policy issues that are confronting African Americans and America in general. Issues such as healthcare, education, police reform, gun violence, housing, and economic development opportunities continue to be flashpoints in this American life. As I close, I am optimistic, yet I am reminded of the words of my dear brother, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he said, the world is all messed up. The nation is sick. Trouble is in the land. Confusion all around. But I know somehow that only when it's dark enough can we see the stars. 
I see God working in this period of the 21st century in a way that men in some strange ways are responding. Something is happening in our world. The masses of people are rising up, and wherever they are assembled today, whether they're in Johannesburg, South Africa, Nairobi, Kenya, New York City, Jackson, Mississippi, or right here in Lafayette, Louisiana, the cry is still the same. We all want to be free. Juneteenth is a call to action. It is a reminder that we must be, remain vigilant in our pursuit of equality and justice for all. We must dismantle the structures that perpetrate discrimination and exclusion. We must work tirelessly to eradicate systematic racism in all its forms and ensure that every individual, regardless of their race or ethnicity, can fully realize their potential and enjoy the same opportunities and privileges as their fellow citizens. As we celebrate Juneteenth, let us rededicate ourselves to the principles of equality, justice, and freedom. Let us come together in Lafayette, Louisiana, transcending our differences, and work collaboratively to build a city and parish that upholds the dignity and worth of every individual. Let us amplify the voices of those who have been marginalized and silenced for far too long. And let us strive for a future where the color of one's skin no longer determines their destiny. In the spirit of Juneteenth, let us continue to march towards a more inclusive, equitable, and just society. Let us draw strength from the struggles and victories of the past to shape a future where every American can truly live in freedom and equity.